Kimberly Morrow. I'm a licensed clinical social worker in Erie, Pennsylvania, and I'm with my friend and colleague, Elizabeth DuPont Spencer. She's in Rockville, Maryland. We started anxietytraining.com seven years ago, I believe, with uh, in the effort to train as many therapists as we possibly could in evidence-based treatments for anxiety and OCD, because we're just passionate about helping people live well with anxiety. We've made a pretty good dent in that, but unfortunately, particularly with the pandemic, anxiety and debilitating anxiety and OCD um, has really had an uptick and it's really a mental health crisis at this point in time. So we are really excited today to be sharing with you um, a two day event with PESI. We're gonna be partnering with PESI um, to train you over the next two days um, on Thursday and Friday actually on evidence-based treatments for anxiety and OCD, in particular cognitive behavioral therapy um, for anxiety and OCD. And so I'm wondering how many of you maybe just right now have a client who, you know, really is struggling with their symptoms of anxiety or OCD. And maybe you're feeling overwhelmed with that, right? Um, maybe they have an urgency that they just want to know what they can do to get better and you feel their urgency and want to know how to help them as quickly as you can. Well, I want you all to know that we are here to help you. And so in this two-day training, we are literally going to be taking you through step by step yeah. so that you, by the time you're done with the two days, are going to feel much more comfortable and competent in helping your clients get well. We're going to start with how to um, help you socialize your clients to cognitive behavioral therapy session, how to help them um, learn about their anxious brain. And I want you to know that this is like a game changer for your clients. We're going to help you reframe um, their cognitions, help them change the way they think about anxiety and suffering so that they can accept those anxious feelings rather than fight them or resist them. We're going to teach you how to bring in family members and friends so that um, you can help them become coaches and be a part of your team so that you're all working together to help them get well. And that really takes the pressure off of all of you because then it's not all on you to help your client get well. And then last but definitely not least, we're going to help you learn how to teach your clients to lean into their fears, to lean into these distressing experiences, both in their head and in their lives, and to set up really successful successful exposure and response prevention. So Elizabeth is going to be doing that whole first day. And then on the second day, I'm going to be taking you through OCD, panic disorder, generalized anxiety disorder, social anxiety disorder, how to help kids play with their anxiety. And we're going to use all the skills Elizabeth taught you so that you can put them to use in these different anxiety disorders and OCD. So these are jam-packed days, and we are so excited to be working with you to help your clients live well with anxiety. Elizabeth, what um, kind of jumps out at you as something that you just love about our training? I, 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 I love being able to start off from the beginning with the training because, as Kimberly said, um, I start off doing the day one training. So I feel like I start off with all of you in the audience who don't necessarily know that much about cognitive behavioral therapy. And we're going to keep saying CBT for cognitive behavioral therapy. But then we also add an ERP, exposure and response prevention. And I feel like I love starting off with therapists who are a little, they know something about these topics, but what exactly does exposure and response prevention mean, right? So we, we start with cognitive behavioral therapy, the thoughts, the actions, and the feelings, and recognizing that we can change, like Kimberly said, the way we think, we can change the actions that we have, and that completely changes our experience, the feelings that we have about, about things. And we're going to do that in relationship to anxiety and OCD, but we're also going to do it for ourselves. Because one of the things that Kimberly and I um, feel very strongly about in these training, it's training is that we want you to experience what this is like too. These are skills that are not just useful for you with your clients, but they're useful for you as well. Whether you are a person who has some anxiety 
anxiety or you're a person who does not have anxiety, they are useful skills to have. They're useful in your life. Now, we're also going to be really stressing exposure and response prevention. And that has to do with recognizing with that behavior piece that we have to do something to approach, to lean into whatever it is we're anxious about, whatever our trigger is, in order to teach our brain a different story, that we can handle things differently. And, and that is a crucial part of treatment. But I think it's one that sometimes therapists will have heard about ahead of time, and they'll think, oh, that exposure and response prevention, that doesn't sound like it's for me. That, that sounds like it would be damaging or difficult or unpleasant for my clients and for me as a therapist. And one of the things I love, Kimberly, is during the course of the first day, you know, you and I have, have designed this this talk together over these seven years. We've done this so many times with live audiences through PESI. And then since we've moved online with audiences online who are live, but, but virtual, we, we, we've seen the process that the therapists go through. We've seen the questions that they ask and the struggles that they have. And we've learned how to answer the questions in ways that makes this so accessible to people. It makes it un so understandable why we're going to suggest that you do the things that you do with your clients. And uh, we, we do that based not just on each of us has been private practice for 30 years, not just on our experiences, but on the preponderance of evidence, because there's over 30 years, there are hundreds and hundreds of research studies that show that this is evidence-based treatment for anxiety and OCD, that it really works to change the brains of the person who has anxiety. And that gives our clients a tremendous amount of hope, but it also can give you as a therapist a tremendous amount of hope that you can really be doing something that's gonna change you know, the life of your client, um, that they're not gonna be just stuck with this terrible uh, limited life due to anxiety and OCD any longer. You know, 60 to 90% of people who do cognitive behavioral therapy with exposure and response prevention will get well. And that's just so powerful to know that that's possible. So I wonder, Kimberly, for you, when you think about this, you know, some people will say, what about uh, ERP, that exposure and response prevention? What do you do when people might feel worse? about this? When client, a, a therapist worries that their client might feel worse, what do you say about yeah, that? Yeah, I, I mean, I think in every training we give, you know, uh, therapists who are willing to be open and vulnerable with us, they they say themselves, they're, they're really afraid of making their client feel worse. They, you know, their client comes to them to not have anxiety and to feel better. And so it's, it's really hard to think that we're going to be pivoting and really helping them into those places yeah. of discomfort and, and what a client might experience as suffering. And so I, I think the best way to help all of you with that is to help you have your own experience. Because if you think about it, your fear of having your client feel worse is no different than your client's fear, right? Mm -hmm. And so in this two-day training, Elizabeth will start and I will continue really helping all of you face your own fears and practice with us each of these skills. We'll be doing exposures together. We'll be doing comfort zone challenges together so that you can get on the other side of it and have your own aha moment of, oh my goodness, I can handle more than I thought. Or, oh my goodness, my brain was making that story up. These are the things our clients share with us. Yeah. And, and our job is to help them in that anticipatory anxiety, which is kind of, Elizabeth, what you're referring to. Therapists and clients have that anticipatory anxiety where they're like, oh my gosh, what if I can't handle this? Mm -hmm. What if my client can't handle this? And I guess why I just want to say to all of you who are going to be joining us is we're going to help you find some ways to talk to your client during that anticipatory part of the anxiety where you can say, I know you're feeling really scared, but I am confident that you can do this. And then you just get started taking those action steps into the, the um, anxiety provoking situation and you wait till you get to the other side and you will always get to the other side. And on the other side, you get to have this rich conversation with your clients about what they learned. Okay. What, what, what is their brain? How's their brain seen it differently right. now? What do they know now that they didn't when they were avoiding doing this thing? And, and I just can't tell you all of you enough this is the best job in the world the to have. Best. The yeah. best. The best. 
I was thinking about um, a client of mine who had such terrible, debilitating social anxiety disorder, and he started college during the pandemic. Um, so he was completely virtual online and he's good at academics. That is not the problem for him, but the social anxiety, he had no friends. It's so sad to see a college student with no friends, doesn't go out, doesn't do anything, right? Just living his life in his bedroom at home. It, it's so contrary to where a person needs to be developmentally in their life at that stage. But the social anxiety was just had just pinned him in that place. Um, and he made so much progress. Um, and actually, I saw him today. And do you know, he was telling me about, um, he'd gone over the weekend to a Super Bowl party with people that he very, he knew just sort of peripherally. One of his other friends suggested that day, that morning that they go to this party. And he had this wonderful time at, at his the Super Bowl party over the weekend. And it just, it warms my heart to know that this treatment is so powerful that that he can have this full rich life that he's not limited he's not just living in his bedroom any longer right he's out there doing the things that he'd only dreamed about doing before and i think sometimes um the, the, the clinicians who are sort of new to this can sort of say how do you get those kind of results like how do you ha make that happen and again i just want all of you who you're thinking about that question to know we absolutely take you through the nuts and bolts. We take you through step by step how you're going to go through this process in order to help your clients. We want to be there for you, supporting you so you can support your clients on this journey. Yeah. And, you know, you just shared a client story. And, and one of the things I love about I, I love this training. I love giving this training. Um, and one of the things I love about it is that we we share client stories, but we also have clients um, where we share um, audios of them talking about what skills they loved and were most helpful to them. Because I think hearing from clients and what, you know, what social anxiety or generalized anxiety disorder really feels like in their lives and how they came to therapy, not believing that anybody could help them and then speaking to, and then I learned these skills and I practiced them and all of a sudden my life grew and I wasn't alone with my fears anymore. So we share lots of different stories and we share our clients with all of you. And at times, you know, I think we even shed a tear or two together because it's just amazing to see the transformation in these people. Um, I thought it might be fun to just share a, a couple of things that we do that hopefully you guys will be um, doing with us. On, do you want to share first a couple of things that you do on day one? And then I'll, I'll share a couple of fun activities we do on, on day yeah. two. Yeah. For example, I, I use um, a finger trap to, to share an analogy about how we can get so trapped in our thinking patterns, right? So all of you are probably pretty familiar with a finger trap, but this can be a wonderful teaching tool for you to use with your clients. Um, and we also will be talking about warheads, sour, extreme sour candy. And what does this have to do with anxiety and you know, treating your clients? Th these yeah. are the kinds of things that we do because we want to make this so accessible to you and so accessible to your clients. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you, you'll all be on like Amazon. I shouldn't be putting plug in for Amazon, but you'll be ordering <laughs> this stuff. Like, where do I get my warheads? Where do I get my, my finger traps? Um, we also talk about bean boozled. These are those little really horrible tasting um, jelly belly beans um, as a way to help your clients practice um, handling the really distressing feelings, right? Or faking it till they make it. It's a great thing to do with, if your client has anxiety, but you bring their family and friends in and the family and friends have to each take a bean boozled and have to, have to convince uh, your client that they can handle the distressing feelings. I use Bananagram. Um, I'll show you all kinds of ways to play with anxiety with children. Uh, children get better so fast mm -hmm. once they learn this information about their brain and they start playing with the thing they're afraid of. When we're talking about a panic disorder, I'm going to teach you something called interoceptive treatment, which is really the evidence-based treatment for panic disorder. And one way of doing interoceptive is we hyperventilate through straws until we become symptomatic. So interoceptive therapy is about inducing panic sensations in order to help 
our clients handle those sensations. So the entire two days is packed with experiential learning, sharing client stories, um, talking to you about how you're going to help your clients go from a life paralyzed with fear to a life where they're taking risks and uh, just having a wonderful life, living a valued life, right? Yes. And we we have shared the this same strategies, this same training with thousands of clinicians. And we are just so grateful to PESI now offering it to all of you for free so we can reach even more people. We want you to be successful. I think that therapists, you know, Kimberly, you were talking about how alone people with anxiety can feel, but I think that therapists can feel yeah. so alone. It can feel so trapped. Whatever your treatment setting, whether you're in private practice or in a group or in an institutional setting, you can feel so isolated and alone with the suffering of your clients. And their anxiety has been so, people's anxiety has been so tremendous with the pandemic causing those sky high rates um, that I think therapists really risk burning out and again, feeling so isolated. We want you to feel supported. We want you to feel like you have the strategies, the tools that you need to make that life-changing, uh, give that life-changing information to your client. And seeing that result, that's what's going to fuel you. That's what's going to give you the energy, keep you moving forward. Just the same way that we feel uh, every day when we're going to work, and especially the way we feel when we're having a day like Thursday and Friday, when we're going to be with a whole new group of clinicians. So yes, if you haven't gotten convinced yet to join us on Thursday and Friday, because it's a free uh, webinar, right? Like that's enough um, there. But you're also going to be engaged in all kinds of practice with us. And I just want you to know that if you join us and you do the practices, we're going to treat you just like we treat our clients, which is we are going to give you a reward at the end. So <laughs> stay tuned for what that reward is going to be. And we really are excited to be with thousands of you on Thursday and Friday, teaching you how to help your clients live well with anxiety. Yeah. So thank you all. And we hope to see you on Thursday and Friday.